Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Kylie with Flyskins.com. Today I'm going to be showing you all how to tie a spoon fly. Uh, one of the products I just developed and have been working on for a little over a year now is uh, a, an easy way to tie a spoon fly. Spoon flies are very effective in salt water or even freshwater conditions. So, um, what I'd like to do is give you a little sneak peek on how to do it. There's uh, a few different ways you can do it. You can use uh, UV epoxy or just regular slow cure epoxy. It's recommended uh, that you use a slow cure, not a five minute epoxy. 20 minutes or slow or something that doesn't generate a lot of heat. Also, uh, the fly will be a lot more durable if you use a slow cure. So this is kind of what it looks like right here. It's a tie-in mold essentially. Uh, which you'll notice is there is a front and a back. The front is actually the fat end and when it tapers to the back that's the, uh, the actual end towards the bend of the hook. And then you'll notice this little slot in the middle. Uh, that has a purpose. The purpose is so that the epoxy goes through both sides and bonds on both sides and it also bonds to the the wire or whatever weight you're going to add to the hook. Now one of the important things to do is to make sure that you bend the hook properly. I have three sizes of spoons that are available right now. Uh, size 1, size 2, and size 1 aught. I'm going to use a 1 aught just for the demonstration today. I'm going to take a regular 1 aught. This is a Gamakatsu hook. It's a SS15 and I have to bend it first. So what you need is some wire benders. I'm going to always start at the top here. Make sure it's perpendicular. I'm going to bend it and I'm going to work my way down the shank of the hook until basically the top of the hook is parallel with the barb of the hook. Okay, And then you've achieved the bend that you actually need. I'm going to put it in my vise here. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to apply weight to the very bottom of the hook, or which will actually be the bottom because that's the way it's going to ride. So I'm going to use 0 0.0025 for this uh, particular size, and um, I usually only step it down when I get to the number 2 to the 0 0.015. So I'm only going to wrap the lead just at the bottom here, or the top, but this will be the bottom of the fly, right there. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I usually like to put a tail on mine. It's not necessary. There's several uh, ways you can do this. You can use a piece of zonker strip, rabbit fur, or you can use one of my SR or S SR tails, and they work really well. That was one of the main reasons I designed that tail, is because it creates little to no drag in the water, especially on the spoon. There's multiple different sizes, and it adds a ton of action to it. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use a th very thin strip of rabbit zonker. Okay, I'm also going to use this mono thread. Hairline ca carries this hairline dubbin, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to lay a thread base. I'm going to wrap over my lead, and then I'm going to wrap just over the bend of the hook here, and then I'm going to come back to right behind the lead. Alright, since this hook is going to ride upside down, I'm going to tie in this rabbit zonker and I'm gonna actually going to tie it like this. I'm going to strip away some of the fur just at the tip there. I'm going to tie this in right behind the lead. And I'm going to go down past the bend of the hook there. And the reason why is because that's where the spoon is actually going to get tied into. The cool thing is when you apply your epoxy, uh, all this stuff gets becomes one unit. Okay, so now I'm going to take my spoon fly tie-in mold. I'm going to pluck it out. I'm going to leave the piece that was in the center there, so it looks like this now. I'm going to tie in the back side. Okay. Now, if you notice, you can kind of shift it around. And I want this tip 
here in the front to touch the front right behind the eye of the hook. Tie this in, a couple wraps, I'm going to lift this up out of the way, tie forward, put it down, and then tie in the front. Okay, so what you're going to notice, everybody see that? It's curved, the lead's sticking up a little bit through the, the gap there. I'm going to slowly wrap up towards the tie-in mold here and that decal essentially is going to slightly curve in. Okay, It's going to give you a little curve there and that's what I'm looking for. You can adjust it, pull it around a little bit if you need to, if it's shifted on you. Now the only thing I have left is I'm going to tie in some medium bead chain. Um, this adds a little uh, nose weight and it's going to help it dive down in between uh, strips and if you do a slow, real slow strip, this thing's going to wobble back and forth. And that's basically what all spoon flies do. So I'm going to tie this on the front side here. It really doesn't matter if you put it on the inside or outside, but I'm going to put it on the outside here. And when I put my epoxy on, I'm going to go over all these threads. And it's going to, I'm going to use the slow cure epoxy. So it's going to seep into all those areas. You're also going to need a drying wheel, especially if you use the slow cure epoxy. And you can also, uh, like I said, you can use the UV as well. Loon makes some cool stuff now. They've got uh, these pearl... Um, coloring and it's almost like a really fine glitter that mixes with the loon stuff. I'll show that in another demonstration. Okay, so like I said, you're going to want to use a 20 minute or slower. I use a 30 minute slow cure epoxy. Uh, this is actually, uh, you can get it at a hobby store. It's a two part. I use a sticky pad and then that way in between I can just tear off a sheet as I go. I always keep toothpicks on my bench as well. Okay, for the uh, the two-part epoxy for a one-aught fly, you basically need looks like that much. It's about a nickel size, roughly, of each size. I'm gonna mix it together really well, and then all I have to do, because I want to I want to match this uh, color as far as the tail here. I'm looking for a salmony pink color. They don't really sell salmon color or pink. But glitter is a lot like paint in a certain regard where I'm going to mix these two to go together to match that color. So a little bit of orange. And a little bit of pink. Alright, so I've mixed my glitter into the epoxy. Uh, the cool thing about mixing the glitter with this is that it's kind of like adding gravel to concrete. It makes it very strong. I'm going to first start by taking my toothpick here and scooping up some epoxy. I'm going to apply it to the inside. I'm going to work it in all these little areas here. I get it on these threads up by the eye and then the threads up by the tail. Now I'm going to add it to the back side. Very thin coat on the back side. And this bonds really well with the tie-in mold. These flies are really durable. As you put it on the rotating wheel, um, it will actually even itself out. I'm going to come back in. If it looks like I've got too much on the inside, literally all I have to do is take my toothpick and swipe it and roll at the same time. And I'll remove a good portion of it. I want it as light as possible but still durable.
I'm going to take a little more away. And that's all there is to it as far as making your spoon fly. Uh, let this sit probably whatever the recommended uh, part is for drying and then I would leave it a little bit longer just to cure. But all I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick it on my drying wheel. And that's it.